Hey guys, what's up? It's Bird here from Attic Gaming and you know I'm going to go over a Celestial Engineer build that is uh, actually extremely popular in PvP right now. It's kind of funny because the first class I ever rolled in Guild Wars 2 was an Engineer. I got it all the way up to max level and then my wife was playing Guild Wars 2 and we got another computer so I actually ended up giving her my account. And I really don't play Engineer or ever since that happens. I leveled up my Engineer later on and I never really played it that much. So I'm thinking about getting back into Engineer and uh, doing some gameplay videos for you guys in PvP and things like that. So I remember when I was doing the Engineer Changes video, I talked about doing a Celestial uh, Toolkit build where you take advantage of the power and the condition damage of the toolkit. And after that, actually, the Celestial Engineer build for PvP became very popular. And one of the great things about an Engineer is a lot of its kits actually take a lot of advantage of power and condition damage, so Celestial stats really synergize as well with an Engineer. Um, so for this build, you're going to get a lot of condition damage and power because we are wearing Runes of Holbrack, so our power is not going to be as low as you might think it would be. And also we're going to get some might stacking from our Sigil of Battle. Whenever we switch kits, as long as it's off of its inner cooldown, we'll get some might. And the might will increase our power and our condition damage as well, really increasing our power. And the build has a lot of survivability, has a decent amount of condition cleanse. Um, so let's uh, let's go through the traits and the gear setup and uh, talk about the build a bit. So let's go into our traits. Well, let me look at the PvP one. Okay, here's the traits for the standard... Celestial Engineer uh, builds. Some people use three kits. We're using two kits. We're going to use the grenade kit and the tool kit. Some people like to put in the elixir gun. So that's an option you always have as well. You can put the elixir gun in. Um, so I think people even use the flamethrower too. But if I was going to use three kits, I would definitely use the elixir gun. You get a ton of support through the elixir gun. Okay, so for the traits, we're going to go six explosives, mostly because we want to grab this last trait uh, grenadier, you throw grenades farther, and each grenade kit skill produces an extra grenade, which will uh, help us stack our conditions on the grenades, and our grenades will be doing more power damage. So it's a really good trait to synergize with Celestial stats. So let's start from the beginning. We have uh, Evasive Powder Keg. You create a bomb when you dodge. You will do a decent amount of damage, 600 something damage for the just for dodging, and you actually uh, will put a stack of vulnerability on them. And that's one thing you will see in this build is we are going to be stacking a ton of vulnerability. So that alone is also going to increase our power damage while we are still being able to put out some condition damage. Then we have Empowering Adrenaline. Gain bonus damage when Endurance is not full. So when you're PvPing, you know, when is your Endurance ever full? It's, it's never really full. So we're going to get a 5% damage increase when our Adrenaline is not full. Or sorry, and our Endurance is not full. That is a warrior, not an engineer. Then we have Proximity Mines, plant 5 mines around yourself, uh, that's uh, Reserve Mines, release a number of mines when you are struck while below the threshold. So when you go below 25% health, you will put 5 mines around you, and uh, especially if like a thief or another melee character is attacking you, then they're going to hopefully absorb all of those mines. And uh, again, the mines stack vulnerability as well. Then we have Incendiary Powder, probably one of the strongest traits in the game, especially if not the game, it's one of the strongest traits for an engineer because uh, burning uh, hits like a truck. You can see the burning does over 2,000 damage in about 5 seconds. And that's uh, mostly due to us wearing Celestial gear. And uh, that's critical hits if like burning that's on a 10 second inner cooldown. Steel packed powder. Explosions cause vulnerability. This includes our grenades. So as we are throwing our grenades, we will be stacking vulnerability on everybody we are hitting, which is great. And then again, Grenadier, which we talked about already, gives you a 300 range increase, and every single grenade uh, grenade skill gets an extra grenade. So if you think about, uh, like, the poison, now we're going to be throwing three grenades, so we're going to be, the, the poison fields is going to be a lot larger, uh, because we get that extra grenade. A the same with a lot of our grenades, like the chill one as well. And you can, actually, if I mouse over, you can see that the vulnerability, you see the vulnerability um, proc on each of the great grenades now. Uh, that's because of the steel pack powder. Now we go down to alchemy, which is arguably the best trait line in the game. It's an extremely uh, defensive trait line. You get a lot of good stuff in alchemy. 
So it's kind of hard to make an engineer build without doing anything in alchemy just because it's so good. So for our first minor trait, we have Hidden Flask, Drink an Elixir B when struck while below the threshold. Uh, so there's a 75% health threshold that will give us Fury for 12 seconds. You get a stack of Might for 45 seconds. That seems quite long. Uh, retaliation for 12 seconds and Swiftness for 36 seconds. Uh, so we get a lot of boons and they last forever. 36 seconds of Swiftness, that's crazy. And then we have Invigorating Speed. When you gain Swiftness, you also gain Vigor. So actually when we use our Hidden Flask, our Elixir B, if we get the Swiftness, we will also get the 6 seconds of Vigor. And uh, this will tie into a skill in Tools as well, which is uh, very, very helpful. Then we have Transmute. Incoming conditions have a chance to convert into boons. So every 15 seconds when somebody puts a condition on you, that will turn into a boon. And then Backpack Regenerator. Regenerate health every second when using a kit. This really helps us against um, power builds. So Backpack, backpack jet Regenerator is very good for that. Now let's jump down to tools. We have Adrenaline Pump. Using tool belt skills partially restores endurance. Uh, so we'll be able to dodge more, putting more of our bombs down, doing more damage, stacking more vulnerability. And uh, yeah, so that's good. Then we have Speedy Kits. Gain Swiftness when you, whenever you equip a kit. So if I equip the tool belt here, I will get Swiftness. And since we have Invigorating Speed, we will get uh, the Vigor, 6 seconds of Vigor as well, because we are getting the Swiftness. Now we have Inertial Converter. Your tool belt skills recharge when you are struck while below the th health threshold. That's a 25% health threshold. Uh, it's quite good because our Grenade Barrage does a ton of damage. And uh, our Regenerating Mist as well will give us an, a good regen. Uh, also, our Toss Elixir S, which will put us into stealth. So if, we're, if we go below 25% health and we're in a very difficult situation, uh, we're not going to get out of it. We can Toss our Elixir S, go into stealth, and reposition ourselves to uh, a more advantageous spot. And then Power Wrench reduces recharge and improves damage for toolkit skills. Enhances turret repairing skills. Now we're not using our turrets except for, you know, from our supply drop. But reducing the recharge of the tool belt skills is great. We're going to get a ton of damage out of pry bar, power damage and condition damage because we, you can see we do over 1400 damage. And then we're going to put five stacks of confusion on. So this is a skill that we're really going to focus around in this build. Uh, that's pry bar. So that's why we got to pick up the power wrench. Okay, so let's go over our gear and our stats. Now we are using Holbrack runes. You could use strength runes, but what's great about Holbrack runes is that you get the minus 20% condition duration applied to you. And uh, because the meta is so heavy condition right now, uh, that's why I pick Holbrack over runes of strength. But if you want more damage, I suppose you can bring strength if you want. And then again, Celestial Amulet, we get an uh, even number of pretty much every single stat. And then we are using Rifle as our main hand weapon. We're not using Pistol Shield or anything like that. We're going to get a really good amount of power damage from our rifle, which will help out. And we're going to use Sigil of Intelligence. This uh, I'll explain how this is extremely important later on. But basically, every time we switch a kit, as long as this is off of its inner cooldown, which is 9 seconds, we get our next three attacks, we get 100% uh, crit chance. So if you think you switch to your toolkit, and then you hit them with your pry bar, you have 100% chance of critting with that. And that's going to hit very, very hard. And then we have Sigil of Battle, like I said before, so when we're switching kits, as long as it's off, off of its inner cooldown, which is 9 seconds, we will be getting uh, Might. And Might really helps in Celestial builds because you will be increasing your power damage and your condition damage. So let's take a look at our stats. We have 1800 power, a little over 1800 power, which is a good amount for, if you think about a Celestial stat uh, build, or Celestial build, usually the power is a bit lower. So our power is actually is at actually a pretty good place and when we're going to be stacking might um, then we're actually hopefully get over about 2,000 power damage so to be in celestial stats and getting over 2,000 uh, power is pretty good and then you can see our toughness and vitality we have a decent amount about average 1,365 toughness and 1,565 vitality and then we have 25% crit chance remember we'll be getting fury from uh, using our elixir B from our hidden flask uh, so that'll boost that up as well Let's see, our tool belt recharge rate is at 20%. And uh, what else? We have our critical damage is at 193%. A little bit low. If you're thinking like a Berserker build, they're gonna, usually going to have more uh, crit damage than that. Uh, but still, 193% for a Celestial is, is quite good. 
And then we have 439 condition damage. Remember that is going to go up from our, our might stacks. 439 healing power. And then we have 30% condition duration and 20% boon duration. So that's the traits and the gear. So let's talk about the builds a little bit. Um, one of the things I really wanted to focus on was uh, showing you guys the Sigil of Intelligence and how you can work that into your build better. So let me get out of the toolkit, we'll go to my rifle. <clears throat> so there are a few combos you want to focus on with the en Celestial Engineer. Uh, so let me get into combat. Now that I'm in combat, I'll switch to my toolkit. And you'll see I get my Sigil of Intelligence down here. And you can see how how hard the pry bar hits for. Actually the tool belt in general, or the toolkit in general hits really hard. And you can see just I'm just auto attacking. From the pry bar and auto, auto attacks, he went down really fast. And imagine this is a golem, so he's not doing any actions. So he's not taking any of that confusion damage. If this was a real player and he was taking that confusion damage, then uh, he would be taking tons more damage. Now another one you're going to want to do is the grenade. With the grenade kit, uh, you switch to your grenade kit and then you can do your uh, grenade barrage. And that will be a guaranteed crit. And you can see how much damage he took. Nine stacks of vulnerability. He gets the burning from incendiary powder and uh, incendiary power, and he's at uh, lower than 50% HP. I'm getting a little bit of lag here. I'm not sure why, but yeah. Anyway, so one one grenade barrage, and he bas I basically took like 55% HP off of this guy. And with your rifle, when you go into your rifle, you get your uh, sigil of intelligence proc. Your jump shot is something really good to use. Use it in like melee, so you hit him twice. So you can see I did about 4 or 5 damage there, putting on the burning from the incendiary power and the vulnerability stacks. So just from those two abilities, that guy's almost dead already. So those are a few combos that you can learn uh, with the engineer. Another really important one is uh, for the toolkit, you can use your magnet to pull somebody and then combo it with your pry bar. So if you're far away from somebody, you can use your number 5 to pull them. And then use your pry bar right after, hit him, and then put the stacks of confusion on. Of course, the golem goes away um, because they're just pulled back. But anyway, then you can pull out your grenades and throw your grenades down. Same thing with the with the magnet. If you're in your toolkit, you can use your magnet if your pry bar is maybe on cooldown for some reason. Although it's a 12 second cooldown and your magnet is 20 seconds, so you should always be able to do this combo. Um, but if for some reason the pry bar the pry bar is off of combo. Or sorry, is on cooldown. Uh, blah 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 blah. You can use your magnet and then switch to your grenade kit, and then throw some grenades down when they get to you. So that's just another thing to think about. So those are the, some some of the combos with the engineer. Uh, you're gonna want to be switching your kits a lot to get the swiftness and the vigor, and that'll help out a lot. For the uh, toolbox skills, we have the regenerating mist, which will give us regeneration, uh, not just to us but to our allies as well. And because we're using Celestial, we get a decent amount of healing from it. It's not a ton, but we still get a little over a thousand. And then our Grenade Barrage, it throws out seven grenades. Uh, one extra because of our Grenadier trait. And it stacks vulnerability with every single... Um, uh, what's that trait called? With every single grenade because we have... Um, there we go, Steel Pack Powder. <clears throat> and then... Um, yeah, that's it. And it hits five targets. So it's a really good... A really good skill to use when you have your Sigil of Intelligence on, because all those grenades are going to crit. Well, I guess not all of them, but some of them. And then it applies the burning. That guy's taking a lot of damage. And then we have Throw Wrench. This will go past the target and back at us. So we get Throw a Wrench, Stacking Vulnerability, and Cripple as well. Hits them twice. And then our Toss Elixir S, which I talked about a little bit earlier. Uh, this will provide you Stealth. It's a good thing to use when you need to get out of a sticky situation. I remember when we go below 25% HP, all of our tool belt skills re uh, recharge, so we can use it again if we get if we get really low. For our skills on our right side, for our healing skills, we're using the healing turret. Remember with the healing turret, if you want to use it, um, you want to spam it until you see, you see that water spitting out, then that means the water field went down. And then once the water field goes down, we can blow up our, our healing turret. I actually talk about how to use the healing turret on a different engineer build. I'll, I'll just put a link in the description in case you don't know how to use the healing turret. I talk about it quite a bit in that video. Uh, because it is, there is a little, um, it can be a little tricky. If you don't spam your um, soothing mist right away, sometimes the water field won't go off, so you'll blow up your healing turret. 
and then you won't get the uh, healing. You won't get the healing combo from the blast finisher in the uh, water field. All right, so we have again our grenade kit. We have grenade, uh, just our regular grenade. Throws three grenades. Then we have our shrapnel grenade, which we'll put on bleeding, and three grenades as well. We're gonna have to pick another target now. Then we have flash grenade, which will apply uh, blind. And then Freeze Grenade, which is one of my favorite, which will apply a chill. And then we have our Poison Grenade, which uh, puts down poison fields and will poison people who walk through it. So you can see how much poison is actually stacking on him. 34, so 33 seconds of poison because he stood in those poison fields. So, ouch, that's a lot of poison to take. And then we have Elixir S, which is what I'm bringing. Remember, you can bring an Elixir Gun if you want to go the 3 kit build. Uh, but I like Elixir S just because it's very, for me, it's a lot more useful in PvP when you're stomping people and, again, if you need to get out of a certain situation. And then we have our Supply Crate, which will drop a bunch of turrets and some uh, med kits, these little things there that will heal us. Make sure you grab these med kits when you need them, because sometimes I drop my Supply Drop and I forget to pick up my uh, med kits, so don't, don't forget to do that. Um, anyway, those are the skills that we have. Oh, sorry, I actually didn't talk about the toolkit. In the toolkit, we have Smack, which will actually heal our turrets if we hit our turrets with it. Um, there's there's a ton of power damage in the toolkit. Uh, sometimes people underestimate how much power damage there actually is. Then we have number two, which is Box of Nails. This scatters nails and cripples people as well. It's a lot like the, the cow traps for a thief. So you'll see. He's getting some bleed, and you see how long the cripple is on him. It went up to about 7 or 8 seconds of cripple on the guy. So you put that on a point, then everybody's going to be crippled and taking some bleed damage. Uh, then we have Pry Bar again, which is which does a ton of uh, power damage. And also puts 5 stacks of confu confusion on the target. So you can see from there, just from those few hits, how much damage he's taking. And if, uh, if he was actually doing attacks, he would be taking all that confusion damage, which would really, really hurt. Then we have the Gear Shield. This is blocking attacks for 3 seconds. This will save your, li uh, your life many, many times. Make sure to use this at the right moments, at the most opportune moments. Use your, uh, your gear, gear shields. And then we have the magnet, like I was talking about. Pull your foe to you, and then smack him with the pry bar, or hit him with a few grenades. And uh, there we go. That's pretty much the Celestial Engineer build. Remember to constantly switch your kits, and uh, don't forget about your rifle, because you have a lot of damage in your rifle as well. Especially with your jump shot. You have your number three blunderbuss does more bleeds depending on or it does more bleeds depending on how close you are to the target. So uh, you want to be close to the target when you use that. And then the overcharged shot, which will knock both of you back. It's a good way to get people out of the point. Just make sure you don't knock yourself out of the point as well. Our net shot, which will immobilize people, and then we can use our, our jump shot on them like that. Three thousand damage. If I was able to crit on both, it's like four or five and damage. So there's tons and tons of damage in this build to go around. Uh, not just the power damage, but the condition damage as well. And we got quite a bit of survivability because of our celestial stats. Uh, we're not having to sacrifice our defense too much. And the healing turret overall is just a boss healing skill uh, in this game. So that's the celestial build. Uh, if you guys have any questions about the skills or anything like that, then let me know in the comments below. I will put some PvP footage after this so you guys can see it in action. Hold on to your points. Seize theirs. I call upon the storm's power. Hmm. I summon the power of Melanti. Hmm. The waterfall. The waterfall is yours! You've captured the quarry! I'm telling you 
in the graveyard. You lost the waterfall. Health increasing. Lost the graveyard. The waterfall is yours. Captured the quarry. the graveyard. the quarry number two is great because when you're kiting somebody uh, you could throw down your box of nails which basically throws like caltrops behind you um, when they run through it they are going to get bleeding and cripple which gives you uh, some ample time to run away from them while you're healing or waiting for cooldowns or whatnot now we have pry bar which is self-explanatory stacks five uh, confusion on the target Pretty strong for just uh, one ability to stack five condition or five confusion, sorry. And we have Gear Shield, which is a three second block, which is actually pretty long. Uh, since if you look at the block on our pistol shield, that's only a one and a half second block. 
experience that it does have a stun when somebody hits you if you're blocking. So it's good, but use those blocks when like your healing turrets down, you're getting a little low on health, or just to, you see a big attack coming or a lot of damage coming you want to avoid that damage. Then that's that's something good to use. Now we have also uh, magnet, which I was talking about.